Today on Lockdown Red Wings, should Detroit trade for Alex Dabrinkit? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host of Locked On Tigers. And this is a deja vu episode because we did this exact same episode last offseason uh, when Alex Dabrinkit was rumored to be getting moved by the Chicago Blackhawks. Didn't think we'd be sitting here a year later discussing the same exact thing yet again as now apparently Ottawa is uh, looking to maybe move on from him as well. Uh, and that's going to be what we talk about in this episode. As Again, he's a Michigan native. He scored 40 goals twice in his career coming off of a down year with Ottawa. You know, the conversation is going to surround whether or not we want him here in Detroit. He'd be a good fit. And like, if you're willing to pay him and what he would cost, you know, we've done a ton of these trade hypotheticals. You guys get the uh, picture by now. Uh, Scotty, happy Monday. I'm, uh, we, I know we're recording this right after the Tigers just blew the game in the ninth for like their seventh straight loss. How you feeling? Ninth, ninth loss in a row? Mm-hmm. Oh, good Lord. How you feeling, buddy? Fantastic. And they teased you a little bit, too, with that leadoff triple at the bottom of the ninth. They didn't tease me. They might have teased you. My favorite thing. That's really t- stupid of you if you actually got teased by that. So, That's your own fault. They sure stopped, like didn't tease me. <laughs> I stopped watching them, like, a couple of weeks ago when, uh, when they – once they got to, like, a game below 500 and we were like, oh, they might do it, and then it just all fell apart. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. Uh, so my favorite thing to do is when I'm on Twitter – See Scotty quote retweet the same tweet over and over again every time the Tigers get the bases loaded and fail to get anyone home because it's like it feels like once a game it happens because they've got to have like what the most runners left in scoring position in baseball at this point if they're even getting on base isn't there they don't they have the league worst batting average this month with like 120 I mean yes to everything like many <laughs> their problem was they were getting on base a lot but then they had the second worst uh statistics pretty much all around with runners in scoring position in all of baseball and now june they've just completely imploded and and they have one of the worst offenses i've ever laid my eyes on for the month of june so now they're not even getting people on yeah yeah so listen to scotty's full game recap of their ninth straight loss uh on lockdown tigers go give that a listen to right listen to that right after you finish listening to lockdown red wings where we're going to talk about alex to uh like i said a little bit of deja vu scotty let's just get right into it man uh, Alex DeBrinke had a bit of an, a down year with the uh, Chicago, not Chicago Blackhawks, Ottawa Senators this go. year. Uh, 27 goals, 39 assists, 66 points for 82 games uh, in, in 82 games played. Uh, a negative 31 on the season. Now, we don't normally look at plus minuses, but I feel like this Ottawa Senators, Senators team wasn't that bad. They're not that bad of a, a hockey team in all reality. So you see that mm-hmm. negative 31 and it really sticks out like a sore thumb. But on the same side, 66 points, even if that's a down year for him, is what the second best on the on the Red Wings if he was on the Red Wings that year? Yeah, down year. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, is like, do you still want Alex to bring it? Last year was a definitive yes. He was coming off a 41 goal year. He's had two 41 goal years under his belt. Uh, but this year, a down year, do you still believe in the hype of Alex to bring it? Especially because if you do acquire him, you immediately have to pay him. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a this is a situation where I think if you ever were to trade for Debrinket, it would be right now because the value is absolutely at its lowest. Like given the the contract situation and given the year he just had, this is the cheapest Alex Debrinket is is going to be, unless you believe that he's just like not actually that good and he's just going to hang around here for the rest of his career as far as production goes. Then I guess that's a different conversation. But uh, if you are even somewhat of a believer in a rebound season from Debrinket next year and a career going forward that looks more similar to his 2021 than his 2022 uh, then y- you should absolutely be honestly like pounding your fist on the table to bring him in now because this is comfortably the lowest his trade value will ever be. Um, and the 
what I mean, if you wait, then that conversation obviously changes. If he goes out next year, you don't bring him in and then has a great year, then the conversation changes. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's still like it's again, like he had 66 points and was just under a 30 goal season. It's not like he had an awful year or anything. It's just based on kind of what he had been building towards in the first four or five years of his career was a little bit of a step back. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's all about price, right? Like I, I, I wouldn't give up 40 goal score value for him, if that makes sense, right? Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't break the the Red Wings bank to bring him in because there is a little bit of a risk there. Uh, and, and as you said, you would have to pay him pretty quickly, but um, I, I don't think that it would be a break the bank situation. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think that just value wise, this is kind of the time to do it if you are ever going to do it. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is if you look back a year ago when he got traded by the Chicago Blackhawks, he didn't really get like, I was kind of surprised. Maybe it's just because again, I'm like, not, uh, I'm not an insider. So I don't have like expert knowledge of everything, but it just, the, it felt as if the Blackhawks didn't get as much for Debrinket as I was expecting. Yeah. He still had one year left on his contract. He was coming off a 40 goal season and they got that year. So they got the auto senators first, which was a seventh pick overall. They got the 39th overall pick, which was the second rounder for that year. And then they got a third rounder for next year. So they got three picks, but only two of which were really relevant in that trade when it happened. And I just felt like the seventh and the 39th didn't feel like a lot to pay for Alex to bring it. Now, now he is an RFA. So he is, he's arbitration eligible, but he's an RFA. He's under team control. So whatever team is going to get traded to will have control over him. Still, this will be, a, this will be the final time you have control over him, but right. He's UFA he, after, after this upcoming year. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, it's a slightly different situation. Plus if you're trading with the Ottawa senators, that in it of itself is a slightly different situation too, because the Ottawa senators, unlike the Chicago Blackhawks who were trading him away last year are looking to compete. The Ottawa senators aren't going to want three draft picks back. The Ottawa senators are going to want players. Now they're going to want something that makes them better. And then the question yeah. becomes like, it's an in division trade. And we talked about this when we talked about Matthews, Nylander and Marner, you know, it's an in division trade and you're go They're going to want players back now so you're gonna inherently you're gonna make some kind of trade that they're gonna deem is gonna make them better and then it's just gonna make the competition tougher so when you talk about the cost too it could be way different when it comes to the red wings i think they again we talk about everything this is a great year for the red wings to have trade options because they have so many assets available they can make this trade happen and if it comes to moving the ninth pick moving the 17th pick moving one of your two firsts next year fine whatever i don't care it's just when you start talking about what players, NHL-ready players, you're going to give up now that maybe I start getting a little bit nervous because this is a team you're competing, competing with, directly competing with as a rising team in the division. Yeah, absolutely. That That's always uh, – I feel like more so in hockey than maybe any other sport at this point. Oh, football. Because football, you play, you play your division so much more percentage-wise than everybody else. But – uh, it, it's definitely a unique – like basketball, nobody cares about divisions anymore because divisions don't mean anything. You just have to finish top in your conference, and, and that's whatever. So divisions are completely useless. So, like, nobody cares about trading in our division uh, in basketball. Baseball, you're playing your teams in your division less and less and less. It's still, like, kind of, you know, sacrilegious, but, like, you know, whatever. People still do it sometimes. Uh, hockey and, and, and a little bit football too, for sure. But hockey is like the one sport that has really held on to like the, you better be getting a return if you're trading in, or, in your division. Like you, this better be a, a, a comfortable win, or at least you feel like when you make the trade, like a comfortable win for your organization to, to trade in your division, you better be darn sure about it. So that, that certainly does kind of throw a, not a wrinkle, but an, an extra piece into this for sure. Well, another thing I don't quite understand is why the Ottawa Senators are so keen on moving on from him. And I guess we'll kind of talk about that in segment two. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about AG1. 
Uh, our next partner is a product you got to use literally every day. Start taking AG1 because with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all those things. Start taking AG1 because it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, and it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. Our Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine of over $100 a day. So he made AG1, and it's going to cost you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about a, a potential trade for Alex Debrinkit. It's been all in the news, in the rumor mill. I know 32 Thoughts, Jeff Merrick, and Elliot Friedman have been talking a lot about it and even named Detroit as possible one of the possible landing spots for him and one of the spots he'd probably want to go considering it'd be going back home. It's kind of crazy. A lot of the guys that people are talking about this offseason as big trade targets are Michigan natives. And so everyone's just like, they could go back home. It is a pipeline, yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's it's a lot of, think, lot of players in the league from Michigan, for I sure. think in America, it's Minnesota, Michigan, and New York are the three biggest hotbeds yeah. for hockey, produce the most NHL talent of uh, American NHL talent, that is. Because obviously, no, everyone's dwarfed by Canada. Right. But my, <laughs> my next thing is, is one thing that I haven't really seen, and maybe I haven't dug enough about it, and maybe somebody in the comments would be kind enough to explain it to me if I missed it, but why Ottawa is so eager to move on from him? I know he had a down year, and I know he doesn't particularly play good defense. But is it just because he wasn't a good fit? Like, why didn't it work out in Ottawa that this is so quickly becoming, like, th this is just, people aren't even talking about necessarily him signing an extension or maybe getting traded. It's like, he sub supposedly, if you listen to 32 Thoughts, submitted his list, and they're just speculating that Detroit would be on the list of teams he'd want to go to. And it's like, why is he so, why are they so quickly going to move on from this guy that they traded to make them a contender? Is it because he had a down year because he didn't fit the system that they're doing? Because cap space wise, Scotty, they have $17 million still in cap space. And I know they have a lot of contracts coming off the books, so they still have to spend in free agency to fill out their roster, like everybody does, but they still have the money to pay him. They've already played, paid Kachuk, they've already paid Stutzla. Like they've paid a lot of their core guys already and still have $17 million left. It it doesn't feel like it's a question of dollars for me. It feels like it's a question of fit. I mean, what do you feel? I I actually think it's a hundred percent fit. And I know that it, it's kind of a, we say all the time to take this stat with a huge grain of salt. But like, if you just look at his plus minus year by year throughout his career. Okay. This he, played on some bad, he played on some bla bad Blackhawks teams too. Like, let's right, like yeah. Team. These are not necessarily like cup contenders every year. So his rookie year was 17-18. He goes plus 6, 0, minus 10, plus 3, minus 13. And then this year he was a minus 31 with 66 points. I think that screams a, a, a fit issue. And like, obviously the, the top three in Ottawa are like pretty set with – with Stutzla, Kachuk, and Giroux, some combination of those three are usually going to be toward the top. And they obviously their depth got better as the season went along, but they do the patented, you know, slow Ottawa start that, that you know, death tax isn't a slow Ottawa start. So, like, that was a thing. But that for, uh, by the end of the year, it, it was a lot of uh, like Debrinket and, and uh, Batherson and I think Joseph at one point, but like Pinto obviously was like up there. Like, it, it was a, that's a, that's a weird, I, I don't want to say it, maybe weird isn't the right word, but like that is an interesting fit to like slide in there just play style wise and to see his production tank, his goal scoring especially tank in while being a part of that top six where plenty of other people on this team, especially again in the second half of the year, had productive seasons. Uh, I, I think it's absolutely fit. And again, like 
plus minus is very far from an end all be all. There's much better stats out there, but um, just seeing like the names that I just listed off that are like the majority of the time who he was playing with, plus the fact that he had a career worst and plus minus by like 20 is, is I, I think kind of screams like fit issue. Yeah. And you know, it's not just like, if you, you say pl- plus minus, obviously again, echo your sentiments plus minus isn't really a good individual stat sure. but when so- one person's plus minus is so much worse or better than the other right. then you start going okay well there is some truth to that outside of that you look at the other statistics too you know he had an expected goals for percentage of 49.64 now normally you'd think to yourself okay well they weren't a playoff team so like it's harder for individual players to have that above 50% threshold. Like that's what you want. Like in baseball, you'd want like a 700 OPS or whatever Yeah. In, in hockey. You want that expected goals for percentage to be 50% or higher to then deem that player a positive asset on the ice. His was 49.64, a hair below, which means that in games where he was on the ice, uh, this is a cumulative across the se- season. The team was worse with him on the ice just by a, like just by a hair, you know, just barely. You start switch it to relative to then put it. Okay. What about during the game when he like in games itself, when he was on the ice first off the ice, he was negative 0.04. So on this Ottawa senators team, he was just barely a negative asset out there, which means he's still doing some good out there, but just the lack of defense that he plays. Cause again, he's not a defensive first guy. He's a goal scorer. He's a pure goal scorer. It was hurting the team more than helping. So that screams, like you said, Scotty fit issue. He was still a plus. He was still above goals above replacement, above war wins above replacement. Because it's still a guy who scored twenty seven goals and had sixty six points. Not trying to make it sound like Alex Debrinket wasn't providing anything out there. But when you look at For it sure. metrically, analytically, what he provided to the team, it just generally with the way his style of play meshed with the team, they got they gave up more scoring chances than produced with Alex Debrinket on the ice. And it, like I said, that just screams fit issue because you don't have that problem with a guy who scores 41 goals in a season. Yet if, at some point, the offense will outweigh the lack of defense. But then the question becomes, Scotty, too, Derek Lalonde is trying to build a defense-first team. He wants to echo the sentiments of the Tampa Bay Lightning. So would Alex Debrinket be a good fit coming back home to Michigan? My, my thought on this is, you got to have a goal scorer. So I'm not going to go out there and turn down goal scores because I'm worried that he might not be a fit. What I would do is get the guy first and then figure it out. Because here's the breaking news, guys. A lot of the times your premier goal scorers in the NHL, then this isn't this isn't a hard, fast rule. There are plenty of exceptions. But a lot of times your pure goal scorers don't play good defense, especially on the wing. Because that's just how they play hockey. They play with the idea of putting the puck in the back of the net rather than, you know, making the play in the defensive zone. That's just how a lot of these guys work. So acquire the guy who has proven on multiple occasions he can score 40 goals and then try and figure out how to get him to work in the system. Either you want to try and change his style of play and tweak it a little bit like they did with Larkin, who plays a much better defensive game now, and he still can produce over 30 goals. Or you just set him free and say, all right, you go do the way you do it. But this team so desperately needs a 40-goal score that the Red Wings aren't in a position to pass on guys because they're afraid they might not fit their system. Correct. I I, I completely agree. And I, and I also don't think that it would. Like, I, I don't think that his style of play isn't a good fit either. And and again, like the reason for that is he's going to get every opportunity in the world to score goals here. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like there's no like, oh, we, we really need to, to put the puck on everybody's stick. He needs to pass more. He needs to share it more. Like, no, dude, grip it, rip it. Like we, we need goal scoring in the worst possible way. So like, I, I don't think I'm not really scared of a, of a fit issue in that regard, but Um, just because of the amount of opportunity and kind of like leash he's going to have with this offense if if he were to to be inserted into the lineup here but uh yeah I I I, again like I'll I'll reiterate what I said at the beginning like I it it all comes down to price I'm not trying to say that you should just no matter what bring him in but 
I'm just saying if you were to. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Like in, in the same breath, I mean, I, I I don't think that if the price is right, that the wings should be worrying about the fit side of things. I agree. Yeah. With that. Oh, I, I 100%. 100%. Um, let's take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to f- wrap this conversation on Alex to bring it. Uh, but first, I got to talk to you guys today about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know your part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Motors guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Segment three, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about Alex Dabrinkit. My follow-up question, Scotty, I feel like we were, I guess this is more of a statement, not a question. I feel like I always want to lead off with, here's my question, and then say go into a statement rather than the question. So we're talking about how it was like a down year, right? And if his down year is 66 points and 27 goals, that's still the hell of a down year. Like it's still, and his player card, and I'll throw it up here so people see it. It's not pretty this year. It's it's not a pretty player card, but there are still things to take away that are positives from it. You'll see here when looking at the player card that yes, his expected goals above replacement at offense and even strength defense were really bad, especially the even strength defense. But that's not surprising. But if you look here, his power play, he is phenomenal on the power play because of his ability to shoot and create space and get to areas to help his teammates out on the power play. He is a force to be reckoned with on top of the fact that he's really good at drawing and taking penalties. This is him in his down year. This, this player card, Scotty still produced 27 goals and 66 points in a down year with a non-playoff team. Yeah. If you can get him back to where he was on a on a good year, then he will be stellar. I'm trying to get this to go back to how I it was. That. Oh, now Dude, you're really? gone. Now, there we go. <laughs> it was it wasn't working. It just I mean yeah, you have yeah. access, you could see it. Not a user error, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but if that's how it looks on his down year, if you can get him back to 40 goals or 35 goals, even like the impact he could have on the Detroit Red Wings would be a, a monumental. The question becomes, again, arbitration eligible free agent. Are you comfortable with paying him what he's going to want to be paid? Which is, at a minimum, probably going to be 8 by 8 considering he's coming off a contract that pays him 6.6. Right. That's definitely the... Uh, that That's definitely the... the uh, uh, I guess. I was going to say the biggest question, but I guess maybe that's not true. There's a lot of questions surrounding this. We already talked about fit. We already talked about price tag. Uh, as far as like trading goes. And then you also have the price tag of, of uh, contract afterwards. So yeah, like th- again, this is just all reasons to, to like, in my opinion, you're not breaking the, the bank in your organization to acquire him. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't really have any, he's what 20, this is, will he is age 26 season coming up? Yeah, like he's I, 25 right now. doesn't turn 26 until midway through the season. Right. So yeah, I'm, I, I don't, I don't fear right in your window, right where you want your window to be. If you, if you believe that he is going to be an impact player and be in the top six for this organization for that, their competitive, like championship slash playoff, whatever you want to call it window, then like you should have no issue doing that. You, You, you really, you should have no issue throwing that contract out there. Um, and yeah, I, I I don't, I don't fear that either. Like, again, if this is like the bottom of the barrel, like if this is, this is the worst season we're going to get is 66 points. If he's going to be second on the team this year, obviously in points. And that's like his, his basement. That's like his absolute floor. Then like, I, I see no reason to why, as to why that should be too much of an issue. And you have enough cap space too. It's not like you're going to be crunched for cap either. You could pay him. $8 $8 million, you could trade him and then immediately sign him to a deal, and that would get you to the floor. Right. 
the Red Wings are $8 million under the cap floor. And like, I understand people who are trying to look long-term, like, oh, I don't want to put the Red Wings in a situation. Wouldn't want to put the Red Wings in a situation where they'd be cap crunched in the future. But they have such a big need for this type of player because even if he was, even throw away the fact that it was a down year, I still believe in the Alex to bring it hype. He's 25 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and you're such a desperate need of that goal score. Pay the man. Like, I, you have so much cap space. Pay the man. It's perfectly fine. I think Alex Dabrinkit would be such a no-brainer. I thought he was a no-brainer for the Red Wings last year, too. Even more so this year, considering the Red Wings, I think, have even more assets to offer. More but, assets, and again, he he will be cheaper than he was a year ago. Like, objectively. <laughs> yes and no. It's hard to tell because it's now this is in division. And trading with the Ottawa Senators might... Uh, raise the price. Yeah, I guess. Also, because they're going to, I think like, the Senators are just going to be looking for different things. So I, I don't know how much last year's trade applies. I mean, last year he had two years of team control after a 40 goal season. I'm pretty confident that in your division or not, this year is going to be cheaper than that. A year away from being a UFA coming off of a 27 goal season. Yeah, you still have to sign him like right now because he's an RFA right now. Right. Uh, but I would give him that, that long term extension as soon as possible because you don't want him to get to the open market where he can command more money. You don't want that. So, I mean, for me, that's, that's just a, a no brainer. The other thing that people are usually concerned about with something, someone like Alex to is the fact that he's undersized. He's five foot seven and 165 pounds. You know, what's weird is as time goes on, people care more and more about size, but when it comes to wingers, it just doesn't, bother me as much which is ironic because we talk about like what does raymond have to do to get better at five foot eleven or five foot ten whatever it is is put on size but some of the best goal scoring wingers in the nhl are are under six foot tall you know brad marchand's like five eight five nine like some johnny goudreau is famously very is five nine alex to has had two 40 goal seasons he's five seven like when it comes to wingers and goal scoring wingers at that I don't care so much about their height stature. It's about their ability to skate and create space. Like your ability to out skate an opponent is going to outshine your size. If you're a goal scorer. Yeah. He's also done it twice at the NHL level before the age of 25. Like I feel like if that was a legitimate problem, we'd like, (laughs) I feel like that would have kind of reared its head by now. Like people would be talking about that and, and, be like very aware that that could be a potential issue, but he's he's had two 40 goal seasons before his 25th birthday, so I think we're probably good. I see, yeah. So I think it's I not guess like a prospect. As we wrap up this conversation, Scotty, my my thought process on it is, uh, even though he had a down year, he still had 60. You know, this window is too narrow now. I have to bring in my quotes closer so you can <laughs> see me do it. Um, even though he had a down year. I still think that he's that 40 goal score. I'd still be willing to trade for him because I think the team needs him. And, you know, the the price of the trade would be the one thing I'd want to see to see how comfortable I I would be. I for don't sure. think Eisner, I don't think Eisenman would make a trade that he would deem the Red Wings come out as a loser of and he so far hasn't really done a trade that has really hurt the franchise. I mean, even the one that hasn't worked out, the biggest fl- I don't even know if you can call it a flop of the Jacob Verana trade. I mean, the Capitals are about to trade Mantha again. Which I guess, hey, should we do it? Should we trade for Anthony Mantha episode? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just I kidding. I think I'm good on that, to be honest. The, right, we still got for, two first round picks out of it, and one of them turned into Sebastian Cosa, who could be like a bona fide stud. Uh, not two first round picks. I think it was just the one, and then the other one was Buchanlikov, and then that trade, the panic trade, led to Jake Wallman. So, like, even the <laughs> biggest flop in Eiserman's era has still produced some of the you know promise, most promising and best talent on in the organization. So. I trust Eisman to get this trade done if that were to happen, and then I'm comfortable with paying him. So I, for me, this is a yes all the way around. Get the Farmington Hills native back home. <laughs> I'm with it. All right. You have any uh, final thoughts, buddy? Uh, we ball. We do ball. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. Every day.